special guest. Her name is Wendy Luli. She is an actress, author, and motivational speaker. Wendy and her twin Brenda landed the part of Baby Gray Singles in 1978. Apparently, she and her sister were precisely what Michael Landon and the producers were looking for. Retiring from acting to attend kindergarten, Wendy is now a motivational speaker and is about to release a book entitled A Prairie Devotional. Please welcome to the show, Wendy Luli. How are you, Wendy? So good. Nice to be here with you, Mark. Thank you for taking the time to speak with me. Um, I've been looking forward to this. I know that you've been really busy with your book. Um, I guess you're going back and forth with editors, maybe, and it's a, probably a very stressful <laughs> time. So I, I kept on sending you um, passive-aggressive, friendly reminders that I'd love to get you on the show. <laughs> so I really <laughs> appreciate you taking the time. Well, thank you for your patience. My edits are all in and I actually will only be doing one more read through for like typos. So oh, wow. I'm on the clear, totally relaxed and sitting here with my dog and a cup of uh, apple cider having a great time. So <laughs> nice. Um, <laughs> ironically enough, not really. Um, I was on your website this morning and where is it? And I came across something that happened with your dog just a day ago. Your oh, dog yeah. got out? <laughs> no, she didn't get out. Is that what it sounded like? Well, it says our puppy dog, Mo, was, um, was gone for the night. Yeah, oh, it no, was, was a plan. Was that on purpose? <laughs> it was in a night of romance? <laughs> I didn't even think about that. It was actually a planned romance. She's actually <laughs> going to be glad to be a mama. I oh, my God. It sounded like, you know, it's funny because somebody left a comment that's so I'm glad she's back safe and sound. And I thought... <laughs> What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know, what's funny yeah. is um, I have a miniature um, poodle, um, like a like teacup poodle. And my sister-in-law has a mini same exact dog, but kind of lighter. And we kind of brought them together for one of these little rendezvous. And, um, you know, she had puppies. It's amazing. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> they go right to town. It's ridiculous. Oh, yeah. That's like, what they said. They, like, don't let us leave the room. <laughs> <You know? laughs> But, um, yeah, I thought your dog got out, so that's what it kind of sounds like. But Well, maybe I should go in and change that. I didn't even think about that. And you have a picture of I... your, your children, and it's almost yeah. like, we found him. <laughs> Just the way I'm kind of getting it. But um, Okay, I, well, I that's interesting. I'm glad, I'm glad you cleared that up for me. <laughs> <laughs> but I love the blog post, actually. So that was something that um, yeah, I read through and, um I think all of your writing is really thoughtful. It's very, um, you have a real talent for it, I think. And I really can't wait for your book to get released. Um, it's going to be released in the summer of 2019. Yes. The beginning of August. I think it's the sixth, sixth of August. So yeah, very excited about that. It's, uh, I'd say that my devotional is, it's very based on little house. Um, mm -hmm. every single, chapter is based on a quote from the actual show and um then it's just a little story about my life or somebody that i love and um trying to, to relate that story to us and how we can live mm -hmm. so um yeah it's it's very a very different kind of devotional um not one like i've ever read so <laughs> i will be uh, great for anyone that really loves Little House. Obviously, a Little House fan is because they're going to know every single quote and how what happened and all that. So, um, so yeah, it's it's very exciting. I'm kind of over the moon, excited awesome. about it. kind of a dream come true. So now, when I first saw the cover, I was immediately I thought it was really a perfectly chosen uh, piece of artwork. And from what I understand, you're working with um, Stephen Noble. And he's, yes. um, he does Scratchboard. And if people don't know what Scratchboard is, and for one, you should just kind of click the link and check out Wendy's book, um, at least the cover. I think you could do a pre-sale too. But the the art that you um, that he's done for this, and um, I guess you worked with him closely on this, uh, really kind of captures 
the entire, I guess, um, just the whole gist of Little House. And just from this one image I'm looking at, and I'm like, it's really just perfect. It's not, you know, it's not inspired by, it is, you know, and I, I really appreciate little details like that. Um, I also come from publishing, so I'm a nerd when it comes to this type of stuff. Um. <laughs> yeah, so excited when I first saw the cover, and he is doing a series of um, pages in the book that will capture different things. And I've, honestly, I haven't seen them all. I've only actually seen, wow. obviously, the cover and one other that is amazing. <laughs> and um, so he's going to be doing a series of you know other ones to go throughout the book, and I haven't even seen them all, which I don't know if that's typical, but um, <laughs> it is. Yeah, it's going to be really exciting to see what he does. Um, it's very, very little house, but then it has a little bit of a twist. Like my son said, well, I really like it, but like the wagon doesn't look exactly like the wagon. And I'm like, no, because it's like his artistic flair bringing it to too. It's very, very iconic, but then it's not exactly like what you would see, like a picture of the set. And so I kind of think that's good. You know, it's a little... He's got a little bit of artistic license there, so it's weird. You know, sometimes when when you're a child actor, a lot of people won't be very fond of their time while you know in front of the camera, and it seems as though you've been able to not only accept that but also kind of grow with it. Um, have you gone back and forth with Little House? Like, is it something that you struggled with, kind of? Um. I guess, or either grown with or learned to love or, cause it, you know, from almost birth, you were there. Yeah, we, now you'll have to excuse me. Sometimes I'll say we, because I never <laughs> did this for myself. I, right, my publisher kept saying, you need to say I, because <laughs> it's your story. Um, so if I but say we, twin. I do mean I. So but... it's like, there's almost never an I, right? <laughs> right. I am baby Grace, but we are baby Grace. So, um, <laughs> but yeah, I would say that Little House has always been amazing to us. And we, as three and four year olds, loved, loved everything about Little House. And we still love everything about little house. Like there was never anything that was negative. There was never any, a time that we didn't want to go to work. Mm -hmm. I mean, we were before, so, I mean, it was pretty fun. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, um, um, even, even like the show is over and we can't wait to get home from school to get our homework done so we can watch little house. Like wow. we are fans, like we are fans just as much as all of the world is a fan. I'm, I'm almost more of a fan than I am an actress, which is funny because I was only on it. So I was so young. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I would say like, I don't have any, anything negative that I could ever say about anything. And I've spoken little... to a few people who've been on the show, uh, like Charlotte Stewart and Alison Arngrim, and everyone kind of falls into that category. No one really, everyone looks back at, being on the set in a very fond way. And you don't hear yeah. that. I mean, um, I'm sure that you, you know, several actors and you hear these kind of horror stories, right? <laughs> yeah. And, um, it doesn't, I mean, I'm not saying it was a perfect ecosystem, but I mean, it's, um, it's really one of these things where right across the board, for the most part, everybody seemed to have a pretty positive experience. Um, Little House was a family. Um, everybody was a family together. And my mom used to say that it was a dream getting on Little House. And even when the show was over, there's just nothing that could compare to the cast, the crew, the producers, the directors. It was, you couldn't get better. What are your earliest memories of Little House? I mean, you were, like you said, you're very, very young. Um, but I mean, these are also very big things that are happening. I mean, when I was two years old or three years old, I wasn't, you know, I didn't have cameras being put in my face and, you know, these exciting things happening and animals everywhere, probably. Um, yeah, it's hard to say like what my first memories were. There are a few memories that um, I guess it's something, you know, when 
something happens over and over and over again. You don't mm -hmm. even remember when it really happened. Sure. But I remember like vividly getting up really, really early in the morning, like when it's still dark and getting piling into the car with all of our blankets and driving through LA traffic <laughs> and getting to the set and walking through the doors of MGM. And I remember this is like one of the silliest things to remember. But if you think about it, if I'm three, this is really important. Walking through the doors of MGM studios and there's a big, long table full of pink donut boxes. Like I can see it right now. <laughs> and we got to pick any, any donut that we wanted every single morning we came to work. And it was like, that's, like what a three-year-old yeah, dream like, about. It's like Christmas morning <laughs> over and over again. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, we were totally <laughs> remember being um, on location in Simi Valley and all eating lunch in the big barn where they would have all the food and um, playing on the swing out by the big tree and visiting the animals. And um, I, I guess the thing we probably remember the most and this is because we were a little bit older is that after the show was over, not just season eight, when we stopped, but when the season, when the show was actually over, um, there were a ton of goodbye parties. And, um, so we were then like five and a half. And those are things like, I remember getting picked up in a limo for the first time. And we had these blew your mind. dresses that we were wearing and having to go up on this stage with all these lights and these, these ladies dressed in these big black fancy dresses escorting us up there. And like, um, we had a big goodbye party and, um, dancing with all the cast members. I, I remember Victor French was spinning me around and Merlin Olson had Brenda. And I mean, those are the things we totally remember. It's amazing. When you uh, talk about it, you really, the way you describe it really is kind of like, you know, uh, when people reflect to their childhood, like say Thanksgivings or, um, or Christmases and they have these big, you know, family parties and, you know, the way you speak about it is very, um, it just seems like it was a really wonderful experience. Um, now you were on the show for about four years, you and your sister, <laughs> just you, <laughs> you get all the credit. Um, <laughs> you know, it's, um, so four years, a tremendous amount of time, you know, especially, for a young child. And from what I understand, and please correct me if I'm wrong, you and Brenda did a commercial and then your mother made a choice or maybe helped you make a choice to um, I, maybe retire from act from being an actor. Yeah. So here's the kind of funny story is that when little house ended, we had an agent, we were trying to get other work and we only had two auditions. The first audition was a McDonald's commercial. And this is hilarious, but um, we had never been to McDonald's ever. <laughs> what? <laughs> my, mom, my mom was, uh, this sounds funny because we were on Little House, but my mom was like a poor mom. Like literally we had no money. We never went anywhere. Like donut boxes at the set. Like that's, we just, we didn't go out to eat. I don't remember ever going out to eat. And so we did this audition <laughs> with the producer, whoever it was. It was, I don't know who it is who talks to the, you know, kind of interviews the kids, but they showed us a picture of Ronald McDonald and we didn't know who he was. <laughs> the only kids in America. In, well, this is about we like 1980, not, right? Or something like and that. And we literally were like, like, what do we, what do you, what do you want us to do? And I think they wanted us to be excited to see Ronald McDonald. Like, haven't you ever seen a commercial, like a McDonald's commercial? Like we were three, we didn't really watch TV. Like, you know what I mean? We just, yeah. I don't, so we didn't get that job. Obviously. <laughs> it's like the creepy, you know, Hamburglar or something like that. Yeah. So that was our very first um, audition, which totally was a flop because that would have been a super really good commercial. I mean, that would have been amazing for us. Like McDonald's, but that would have been what? huge. I have to applaud your mother for keeping you away from McDonald's, you know, in a lot of ways, <laughs> you know, it's kind of, you know, it is kind of the worst thing. I mean, you know, no offense really to people who love it, it, but well, yeah, I, I am not really a McDonald's fan and I don't know if that's 
stemmed from when I was younger. <laughs> but when, when my, um, so we never really went to McDonald's much. I mean, I remember going like in high school and stuff, but You're when like, my daughter, <laughs> yeah, when my daughter was in preschool, she got picked up by a friend and they went through the McDonald's drive through on the way home. And her mom asked her, asked my daughter, well, what do you want? What would you like? And she goes, I have no idea what they even serve here. And she had never been to McDonald's and she was about four too. So <laughs> it's kind of this funny joke. We don't go to McDonald's really, unless we're just going to go get an ice cream cone. <laughs> oh my God. Well, think anyway. about it. You know, it's, um, it was really big. It's, um, I have a few years um, on you. I was born in 73. I believe you were born in 77. But I mm -hmm. remember the early 80s. That was like the McDonald's time. Like, you know, it was like yeah. every McDonald's just seemed to really be uh, ubiquitous. But yeah. um, it is really kind of, it's humorous that, you know, it seems as though you've uh, kept McDonald's out of uh, out of the Lee's <laughs> life. <laughs> I know, seriously. So that was the first audition we went to. The second audition, we actually got the part. Oh. And it was for like a telephone company. Like, mm. I don't know which one. Like Pacific um, Bell or something. No, it wasn't like a mainstream one. It was something on the East Coast, like um, something that we'd never heard of. Okay. But the whole thing was is that it was clear as a bell, you know, whatever. Um, and so – there were twin boys and then Brenda and I, and we were dressed up like little cowboys and they were dressed up like Indians. And obviously we just played one, one character. So there was a boy and a girl in this family, but they use the twins just because it, it's quicker. It goes faster. They spend less money. That's how show business is. Um, and so the Indians are running around the kitchen doing, ah, 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 and the, the cowgirls have their, like, literally, we have stirrups and little guns and hats, like, the coolest outfits ever. We are shooting the Indians and running, you know, like, chaos in your house. And so that's kind of the opening scene. Like, mom is on the phone trying to talk to whoever, and she can't hear anything. And then they go to this blurb about the telephone company, and then it goes back to the little cowboy girl and the little Indian back to back tied together. Like <laughs> the only way you're going to get clear communication is if you like rope up your kids, basically. <laughs> so that was our commercial. It was super fun. Although you we don't, were you don't have a copy of it. Do you? What's that? You don't have a copy of the commercial. Do you? No, I don't. And we've tried to find it before and I would have to dig back in I have like a Polaroid picture, which is so random, of us <laughs> during the shooting, like outside, like in between takes or something. And that's all I have. Um I should dig into it more because it would be hilarious to show. Well, I'm gonna dig into it because I, I okay. tend to do a lot of this kind of research and I have a lot of well, friends who do this kind of archival stuff. That would be amazing. <laughs> and we were probably we were probably between probably four and a half or five. So whatever year so, that is, that might help you. Yeah. Hopefully I can that. find something. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, that was super fun. Um, and then honestly, my mom, she was kind of disturbed while we were doing that commercial because the people working on that commercial could care less about us. Hmm. And it was, Complete opposite of Little House. And it was like her first taste of this is what this is like. This is what this industry is like. Like the stories that you hear from other people that it's not so great. Mm -hmm. That was, and now nothing bad happened. We weren't abused or anything, but they don't care if the kid is hungry, tired. They don't know our names. You're it's there just to work. Oh, yeah. You get here you know what I mean and so my mom got this little taste of like I don't know if this is gonna happen for us so hmm. and do you ever look back at that do you ever discuss that with your sister and kind of um think like you know what she did was the right thing 
it is totally the right thing. Oh, I agree. Um, because you know, she, I mean, the mother's instinct, of course. She always, she said, you know what? We don't need to do this. If it would have been just as good as Little House, like if if the experience would have been like that, I'm sure she would have said, let's do this. This is fun, you know. But she just decided, you know what? I don't think we're going to do this. And we, she got rid of the agent right away. And we just became normal kids, which was, I just think is so refreshing. <laughs> do you remember that? Like, do you remember kind of like, wow, you mean I'm just going to go to school? <laughs> That's it? <laughs> With other kids? Well, I mean, if you think about it, we hadn't been to school. So yeah. this was something new. Like, you guys get to go to school every day. It's like, well, that's fun. You know? So, like, it wasn't like we were not going to school. You know what I mean? Like, Oh, you were, you were at an age, actually, where you weren't even in grade school yet. You wouldn't be. You would maybe preschool yep. the most, right? Yeah. We, yeah. So, we didn't do preschool because we were on the set. So, we just went straight to kindergarten. And it was a whole new world. Wow. So, Yeah. Do you know always, of any um, situations where the teachers kind of knew who you were and they were like, oh, we're such fans? <laughs> um, like, I wonder if they approached your mom and said, I can't believe they're in my class. <laughs> I don't know, actually. I have to ask her that. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, that's I, I would imagine they would know who baby Grace is, <laughs> you know, two of them. I, you know? So, um, yeah, I don't know. I <laughs> I have no well, idea. I'll bring That's it up funny. again I, next time. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to ask her because that would be an interesting question if she ever got, you know, we watched you last night or something. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I caught you on a rerun. It was so cute. Yeah. Um so there's a story that floats around, um, and I forget the, the episode's name, but um Michael Landon had changed roles with uh Caroline and he was doing the cooking. And the story is is that <laughs> oh. um maybe both I'm sure you've heard this story where yeah. he gave something spicy to you and your sister so that you would recoil right. fear from his food. Do you, um, one, well, one, did that really happen? And do you not like spicy food? <laughs> <laughs> like now. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Well, um, the episode was Olsen versus Olsen. Okay. And, um, they didn't want, Obviously they didn't want Grace to like the food because it was the it was the humor in the episode is that Pa couldn't cook yeah. and that Grace would eat for him and that Grace was just going to cry and show show the audience like how incredibly hard this is for Charles to stay home and take care of all these kids. Yeah. Um they they put pepper in the oatmeal <laughs> and that was the meal they were going to that he was going to feed me. And obviously my mom was okay with it. Um, the interesting thing is, is that I was very much the crier. I was more shy of the camera and probably didn't need pepper to cry on camera, <laughs> but they really wanted me to cry. And I really, really cried. I mean, that oh, is no. as real can't have a you can't have a three-year-old cry like that without it being real i mean her, my face is beet red and i mean it is not those are real real <laughs> real tears so um the interesting thing is is i we never i never got over it and i never ate from pa again and so if they needed to have grace in the high chair well, Pa never really fed her again, I don't think, except for when... Yeah, it was like here and there, like, you know, maybe here, you know. And really so, if, but if but if Carolyn was feeding me, no problem, and so I could do those scenes, but if it would ever be something with Pa, there's no way I would even sit at the high chair with him. And <laughs> oh. so they kind of ruined that, um, those possibilities. That's hilarious. <laughs> um, yeah, and um, actually, I don't... I don't really like really spicy food, but pepper is fine. Um, <laughs> but like really like jalapenos or anything? No, I don't. But I don't know <laughs> if I really contribute that to um, the pepper on Little House. But That's so funny. <laughs> uh, what do your kids think of 
all of this? Like, will they look at it and it's like, wow, look at mom. <laughs> the littlest I mean, they, of the whole bunch, you know, really. Right. I mean, they think it's really cool. And I started watching it with my kids when my daughter was in kindergarten. Um, she's the younger one. So my son was probably in, I don't know, second grade or something. Okay. So and only like two started, years apart. It, so that's good. Yeah. So we started watching it from the beginning because I always figure like Laura kind of seemed like she was in kindergarten. And so we started watching it like their first day of school and my kids' oh. first day, of, you know, so we kind of watched it from there. And I feel like that's actually a really good time to start watching it with your kids because the issues of school and going to school and family life is very um, synonymous with that age. And so that's when we started watching it. And very, very soon they wanted to get to season five when Grace is born because you you hear about it so much. And I started going on trips with the cast when my son was eight months old. And so it's always kind of been, oh, mom's going on a trip, you know, in the summer or in the spring or whatever. And so they've always known this whole little house thing. And so to get to season five was a super big deal so that they could actually start watching me you have to on go it. through so many tragedies to get there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we had a party when Grace was born and, you know. <laughs> um, the, the funny thing is, is that um, a couple years ago when my son was in sixth grade, his teacher found out that I was on Little House and she was like a crazy, crazy Little House fan. And so my son, like got her a autograph sick, a uh, autograph picture of me. <laughs> we did a picture for her. And then when we went to a Christmas play with a bunch of the cast members after Christmas, she, uh, he brought her a signed photo from Allison and from Rachel. And this mm. lady was crazy. They would watch little house every Friday afternoon. Like they would just put little house on and the whole class would just watch it couple episodes of little house every Friday afternoon. So it was like the big thing to like bring little house in. And so that That's was so like, awesome. kind of interesting. <laughs> <laughs> but I haven't had any other teachers that are totally into it. That's the only one. That's surprising. I bet you they are. Yeah. Um, you know, like when I was a kid, um, I would secretly watch little house. I mean, it wasn't a very cool show to watch as a boy, but mm -hmm. an episode pulled me in. I don't know what it was. <clears throat> and I would, it would be, um, I'm in New York, so it was like Channel 11, 5 o'clock. That's all I did. You know, I would just watch Little House. Um, yeah. As I got a little bit older, I realized all of my male friends also did this. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and it, all of a sudden, it wasn't like such a shameful thing to all of a sudden be a fan of Little House in the Prairie. And now that I'm older, I realize all of my male friends watched it at some point. Mm -hmm. Um. It's one of these shows, uh, I'm sure you'll agree with this, it's completely rewatchable. And there's something oh. really timeless about it. A lot of shows, even though the period was, you know, it doesn't feel like something that was made in the 70s, really. Mm -hmm. um, and yes. I, I think that's one thing that I think Little House and the Prairie fans really appreciate. And Little House and the Prairie fans are kind of nutty, right? <laughs> in a good way. Yeah. Oh, yeah, amazing. They're amazing. Yeah, <laughs> they are loyal. <laughs> but I think that's really great that, you know, you, um, the teacher, you know, I identified that and, um, and you reached out and I just think that's really awesome. It just shows like the kind of person you are. Um, I also wanted to mention you are, um, a pretty religious person now. And I, I was just kind of curious, have you always been, um, a Christian? Um, well, I mean, I grew up in in a home that went to church and um i would say that i probably didn't make a decision for my on my own until i was probably about 14 or 15 years old oh. so i but yes pretty much my whole life i've been a follower of jesus and um my you know it's interesting because there's a lot of questions that people will ask at events. And a lot of it is, did little house affect your life? Like the values of little house, did they like pass on? And it's interesting because 
like my family lives so much like the Ingalls. Like I try to parent like the Ingalls did. I try to um, resolve conflict like they did. Like it's so interesting. It's not just an entertaining show. It's so full of values and the way that we all like would hope to interact with the people around us, like the way that we would hope we treat people and the way that we hope that we would forgive people. And I don't know. It's just, it's really a powerful show. I agree and with you. It's one of these things that as a parent, I can look at and I can kind of, I really appreciate the, the thoughtfulness that went into the development of these characters. No, granted these were real characters, but the actual characters on television, you know, these, these are fully developed characters that would deal with specific yeah. situations in such a kind of, um, just, a, a, again, a, a very thoughtful way. And uh, it's one of those things yeah. that I, I aspire to do as a parent. And um, I wish I had more patience that Charles mm -hmm. seems to have. Well, yeah, but also I love that they show Charles just failing as a parent and like, there's this, there's a lot of failure too. And I think like that is a really good message too, that we don't do it right. Like we don't do it right. We skip church to be in the fields and we probably shouldn't have, we, you know, punch Almanzo because we've, there's so many things like just humanity is, uh, we, we're messed up. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, <laughs> but at the same time, there's always that strength of family, which I think is yeah. the, the, yeah. um, the crux of they don't show characters as being perfect. And it's like, no, 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 no. Like these are such, um, you know, we are all just human and I like, so. Right. Um, yeah. yeah, but I mean, there's not one family on television that has more tragedy. I think, you know, child going blind, um, losing the crop seemingly every other season, <laughs> you know, yeah. it's just, Oh my God. But, um, you know, my wife never watched little house before. And, um, for years and years, I'm like, we have to watch it. We have to watch it. We have to. So I purchased it on like the HD streaming thing. And she finally said, all right, you know what? I'll watch it. And she got to this point, um, where she just couldn't stand Harriet, but she like loved to hate her. <laughs> Uh-huh. And um it was just one of those things where it's amazing how some of these characters just resonate with people on such a an interesting and personal way. You know, this is a show she has no idea about, but at the same time she just absolutely loves to hate Harriet. <laughs> mm -hmm. And um of course we just uh, recently lost Catherine McGregor. Yeah. And, um, you know, and, and that's the thing, you know, it's the sad reality of it as, you know, actors and actresses get older, we, we're sadly losing more and more of them. But the the character of Harriet Olsen also is, um, it seems to resonate with a lot of people. And I think your character also resonates with a lot of people because it, it's like the, the little child, the child that doesn't get the attention. And I always felt that about um, about your character, that it needed more... Um, development. And I, I just feel like that that's one thing I, I wish they kind of focused a lot more on grace. <laughs> yeah. I think grace was kind of, um, she was almost like a prop. Hmm. I don't know if that make that sound bad, but, um, she was, they, I don't know. Um, there were so many characters to develop and, you know, to develop Grace as a character would be really hard. They didn't really develop Carrie very much either, honestly, besides she's the girl that always has to go to the bathroom. Like, you don't <laughs> really know what Carrie. I mean, she falls in the well, but she's so she's so little. Mm -hmm. Or not the well, the mine shaft. Yeah, the mine shaft. <laughs> I, was, I always imagined it as being a well. It wasn't a well. but Yeah, even when um, I was a kid, I thought it was a well until more recently when I saw it again. Yeah, yeah. So... You know, it's hard to develop characters when um, when you have to rely on them. I think that I think that they wanted kids, especially Carrie and um, Grace. I think they wanted to show them the reality of a family and how kids do silly things. And I think that was Grace. They would catch Grace doing what kids do. 
And so it made the family seem more real and not so staged. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that makes sense. No, but, it does. You know, I mean, Grace is crying. Grace is falling asleep on camera. Grace is, you know, <laughs> she's doing things that any kid would do. And they just kind of let Grace do what she's going to do. I mean, what? how do you tell a three-year-old, you know, or two-year-old, okay, go do this and go do this and go, you know, it, they just kind of let Grace do what she's going to do. You know, eating at the table and that one scene where all of a sudden Grace has two spoons and she's eating with two spoons and they make, they, they totally ad lib the whole scene <laughs> around funny dinner, t- dinner time um, scene. And everyone's laughing because Grace is eating with two spoons. And Grace is like, oh, what did I do? You know, and she has this funny, <laughs> like, embarrassed look on her face, you know. But that's like being on a normal um, table around the dinner table with family and just having like a lively conversation. And so I think they were really good at like capturing those moments. And maybe that was the reason for Grace. I mean, oh. obviously, what if I love to have like an episode centered on Grace? That yeah, would have been course. amazing. <laughs> yeah. But no. So the Grace okay. Chronicles, you know? <laughs> yeah, really. Um, uh, do you have anything that you kept from, like, any artifacts from the um, the set or any outfits? Um, We didn't get any outfits. They didn't really give stuff like that away. I mean, I, I know Melissa got, <laughs> Melissa got one of her dresses, but that was, like, she had been on the show for how long? And right. it was, like, a big deal. Like, so people didn't get just to keep their wardrobes. Um, we did have, like, our – those cotton stockings, you know, those really thick kind of, like, off-white brown. Mm-hmm. Because why do you want those back? <laughs> <laughs> <It's> <laughs> Stuff <true>. like <laughs> Just um, wear it home. <laughs> Yeah. So there were a couple things that we had, but honestly, we don't have very much stuff at all. And my mm-hmm. mom, the things that we did get, my mom donated to the uh, museum in Walnut Grove. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah. I'm... I mean, so there's, there's not a lot. Um, we do have like some gifts that we got from different cast people. Mm-hmm. Um, my mom actually just a couple years ago gave me this. Um, it's a, it's a gold coin that Michael Lannon gave to everybody. Um, I think it's the first season that we were on it. So it'd probably be 78. Wow. And it, it's in this little, like kind of looks like a ring box. And it says to a cast, that's pure gold love Mike. <laughs> and it's like just a gold coin. And that's what was the Christmas present that year that he gave every single person. And so like, I have stuff like that. I have a cute little wooden box that has my name on it. And it has a picture of, um, the little house on the front, kind of like in a silhouette, like stamped metal kind mm. of thing. So a couple things like that I have. Um, I have books that the whole cast signed. Wow. Um, you know, like a like an old copy of Little House on the Prairie, hardback. That That's what I was going to ask you. Do, you. do you feel, I mean, being that you are a part of the entire Little House on the Prairie legacy that really goes back, you know, to when the books were originally written, um, do you do you feel like this kind of kinship with it, and do you kind of uh, have you acquired, I guess, original copies of the books and and those type of things? Yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, there's 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 a whole bunch of different kinds of fans. They're kind of like three camps. You have the historical fans that are only fans of the book. You have the television series fans that are like really could care less about the books. And <laughs> I mean, honestly, them are like, I never even read the books. All they did was watch the show. And so you have that. And then mm-hmm. you also have the ones that do, they love both. They love the books. They love the show. They see how they work together. They see how, you know, some things in the books are not the same as the show and why they did what they did. And it just enhances the show and brings these books to life. Um, and I would say I'm definitely in the third camp and I read all the books and I'm actually in the process of rereading the books just because it's good to do. Hmm. Um, I have a couple copy. I don't have all of the books in the old originals. I have kind of a newer set, but I do have a few that I got like in the seventies. So when we were on the show and I mean, they're amazing. Like my kids don't get to read those. (laughs) But, um, but yeah, I, I mean, I, 
I would say that I love everything that's Little House. Of um, course. I mean, you're part of that. I mean, you're literally yeah. a part of that. Yeah, I feel like it, like, I am baby Grace and baby Grace <laughs> is me. And I, you know, and I also, this is so interesting. I don't know why I'm thinking about this, but um, the historical Grace Ingalls was actually born a hundred years before I was. She was born in 1877 and I was born in 1977. And I thought, that is so crazy. It is. And I feel like <laughs> I have this connection with her. You know what I mean? So anyway. When did yeah. she pass away? Do you know? Oh gosh, I don't even know. Okay. I'm sorry. That's fine. I should know. That. I should totally know that. I should. But I don't know that. <laughs> but, you know, um, I, I um, knew of the show um, and for whatever reason, in third grade, I started reading the books and I mm -hmm. remember liking them a lot. And then I think I didn't really go through the books again until maybe I was in like my teenage years because I was just kind of, all right, you know what? Let me just go through all the books, you know, because I think I got derailed by watching the TV show <laughs> like sure. most kids. Right. It's like, wait, I don't have to read it. I can just watch it. But yeah, there's so many differences and um, the books are extremely enjoyable on a whole different level. Yeah. Um, there's actually a book called Slaughterhouse on the Prairie. <laughs> I don't know if you ever heard of that. It's Slaughterhouse? Um, yeah, it's a... Um, huh. No, I haven't it heard of it. Slaughterhouse on the Prairie. Yeah, it's like... Uh, um, it's basically about this... Um, a, true, a true crime that was happening at the same time that the Angles lived where they lived. And um, I could pass it along to you. <laughs> It's, huh. it's, it's is worth that, a read. It's, it's actual. It's not like a made up thing. Sure. Is that centered on the story in Kansas where the neighbors were, um, were killed by the neighbor guy or something? You know, I haven't fully read it yet. So, um, it could be. Okay. That's interesting. Cause when I was in Kansas this last summer, I heard this whole story about there's this town in Kansas, like a little ways away from where, um, where the, the actual log cabin was and how mm -hmm. this is where these neighbors were. And this is where these neighbors were. And that, that these neighbors were actually like murdered by the, and I was like, what? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, are you kidding me? <laughs> Here it is. Um, I found I, it's um, little slaughterhouse on the prairie is what it's called. Um, let's see. It's, it's a nonfiction book by Harold Schechter. I'll send you the link. <laughs> it's, yeah. No, I don't know enough about it to talk about. It. I just didn't know if you'd ever heard about it. And um, No, I haven't. That's interesting. So um, what made you decide to write this book? Is it something that you've always wanted to do to document? Um, I, I guess to marry, you know, your experience with Little House in the Prairie with your, your um, own personal belief system. Is it, which is my, from my viewpoint anyway, is what this is. Sure. So I guess here's the story. Um, we started watching this when my, you know, when my daughter was in kindergarten and I'd say maybe three or four years into it, um, just started realizing like how applicable it was to raising my kids and talking about faith and family and how you treat people. And, um, one night my husband said, Wendy, you should write a devotional of, like based on the loss of prairie. And I was like, that is brilliant. Mm -hmm. But um, like, that's a really, really good idea, but I don't think I can write it. And honestly, I just wasn't confident enough to write it. Like I didn't think I was good enough to do it. And that is um, probably something I struggled with my whole life is just not really feeling good enough. Um, being a twin is really hard. And especially when you have a twin who's really good at everything. And so I just didn't have very much confidence. Mm. And so I kind of was like, yeah, that's a really good idea, but I won't be the one to do it. Even though I thought it was like brilliant. Um, and then a few years later I was diagnosed with a brain tumor and three years ago, just over three years ago, I had brain surgery to remove a tumor and this sounds really weird, but when I woke up from brain surgery, I was a different person mm. and I really had like an awakening, I would say. 
And I decided to live my life a little differently after that. And I won't say that I don't struggle with um, self-confidence, but I started to realize that I have a voice and I have stories to tell. And it really is when I started writing. I never had ever written before that, except for like thank you notes and term papers in college. So <laughs> wow. Uh, started a blog when I was diagnosed with my tumor and after that's when, so that's when I started writing and I just started writing like, and you said something about my blog, this is a funny story of, you know, my dog and my son and feeling lonely and all that. And so I just started writing about my experiences, um, in the hospital and recovery. And, um, you know, it's interesting I always was scared of what people thought of me. And when you're on like a ton of drugs, well, at least the drugs that I was on for um, the swelling in my brain, mm -hmm. the one side effect, the biggest side effect, there were lots of side effects, but the one side effect was that I had like no filter and I would just say anything. And so when you're writing, <laughs> it's kind of like a window to your soul. <laughs> it's like cathartic on a lot of levels, I'm sure. So I would just write anything and it was like really free for me. Like I was like, I had never felt so free to be myself, to like be who I really, really am. And when I got off the drugs and obviously didn't <laughs> have that, you know, that free filter, but I missed that and I... I just realized like I should be living like who I really am, not trying to hide behind who I think people want me to be. That's and so, yeah. So that's when I started writing and probably about six months after my surgery, I decided that I was done blogging, that I was not going to be a blogger. Cause I just, I don't know why. And I didn't write for a couple of months and I literally felt like I was just shriveling up and that's when I decided that I was going to start writing again. And I thought I was going to write my brain surgery story, but God had other plans and that turned into this devotional. But I share so many stories about my surgery and just about life and about mm. being, you know, someone who didn't feel like I was enough and how to just overcome just challenges and even like how the Ingalls have all these things that are really hard things you go through. We all have those stories. Like, yeah, we don't have a crop that goes bad every single summer, but we have death in the family. We have, um, health issues. We have friendships gone wrong. We have marriages that fail. We have so many things that happen. And so I kind of relate our lives to the Ingalls and how they have tragedies and we have tragedies and how do you get through them? Um, so that is really, yeah, that, that's, that's the, uh, that's the story. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> well, having to do with your surgery, you, you've made a full recovery. Um, is yeah. that right? Which is yeah. incredible. That's, that's really great. Um, did you go back and read your writings and kind of go like at first kind of like a little bit uncomfortable because it didn't feel like you at first, but it really was you. I mean, it's probably more you than in a long time. Yeah. You know, um, it's interesting because I'm very, very blunt and I'm very, um, in general now. Well, I'm, I am a blunt person, but when I was writing, like I would say things, like I'm recounting things that were happening where I'm like kind of brutally honest and I wouldn't normally be that way. So I'm basically like relaying, like, this is what's happening right now. We're in ICU and this is what's happening. You know what I mean? Or right. we're in my recovery room and whatever. I, I kind of bring a voice to all those things that are in your brain that you would never tell anybody. Hmm. I don't know if that makes sense. I think it does. Um, it, it sounds mm -hmm. like you had a real kind of um, spiritual awakening or reawakening. And uh, yeah. it seems as though you ran with it. A lot of people might recoil from that, but uh, it sounds like you embraced it, which I think is really courageous. Um, Thank you. And so when you, so you started writing this book and, you know, it's all really kind of coming together. How long did you spend writing the book? 
Um, I started writing it in January. And what I decided was that I was going to watch a season a month and write 10 to 12 devotionals or chapters for mm -hmm. each season. So in January, I watched season one and I copied like on my little notebook, wrote down quotes, every quote that I thought had something in it that had like a nugget of wisdom or a lesson to be learned or something like that. And my son actually watched all of the little house episodes. And he <laughs> was like my dedicated watcher, although it drove him crazy because I'd be like, stop, rewind, play back, rewind, play back. I can't get that word. What is he saying? And so I had to make it like word for word because this is like basically like research. Like if I'm basing it off sure. of a quote, it has exact thing. And so he would kind of go, phrase. <laughs> yeah, he'd get a little nutso with me, like mom, how many times do you have to hear this quote, you know? So, <laughs> so yeah. And then I'd write the, you know, 10 to 12, um, little devotionals and then February came around and it was time for season two. So that was like my self-imposed deadline. I didn't have a contract yet. I just kind of had uh, interest from a publisher and so I just said, if I'm going to get this done, I need to like make my own deadline because I'm not a last minute person. Oh, and okay. so, <laughs> month. so, you know, May was season five and June was season six. And I got my, um, my offer in May. And so I, then I knew it was going to happen. So, um, everything was due on September 15th and I made it through. Well, you so, kicked butt yeah. on that. That's amazing. Yeah, in nine months, thing. you essentially yeah. created this it from scratch, was never, which was good. I was never stressed or feeling like, oh my goodness, I need to like, hmm. you know, so it was great. So, um, one of the things i I thought was kind of interesting that you brought up is, um, the twin thing. Um, uh -huh. now you had the green bush twins. Um, were there any other twins on the show? There were, uh, the twins, the the girls that played baby Rose, which was, um, Laura's daughter, mm -hmm. they were twins also. Oh. Um, you know, it's weird. My father was a twin and two of my closest friends, uh, well, one passed away, but I mean, they, um, you know, it's just weird having twins as friends or even in family. And, mm -hmm. um, I, yeah. I think I see what you were saying before, um, more and more because, there'll always be limitations. It seems with one, like one will always feel like they're in competition when there's really, I mean, they shouldn't feel that way, but mm -hmm. um, there's always the, yeah. the one twin who's like feeling as though the other one is, you know, one upping them. And um, yeah. in real life, you know, when you step away from that, you realize that that probably just doesn't exist, but I, I can't imagine, you know, kind of what it would be like to have somebody like that, you know, in, in, good or bad, you know, they're there for you at all times. I mean, being a twin is like absolutely incredible. Like, like I said in my blog post, like I never had to do anything by myself. I was mm -hmm. never lonely because I always had this sidekick right next to me. And we looked exactly the same. We got tons of attention and um, like, it's amazing. Then again, there's some parts about it that are super hard, like mm -hmm. really, really hard stuff, you know, like, you're never yourself. Like we, like we is we, like, like I'm some in a part of me is never just Wendy. It's always Wendy and Brenda, you know? And it's like Wendy Brenda. So, it's like one person. <laughs> people used to call us Wenda and Brendy. You know what I mean? And be like, or nobody knows your name. And they just say, Hey, you or one of the twins. Or, you don't have a lot of like identity on your own. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's not bad. It's just, it's just how it is. And you don't have no control right, over right. <laughs> uh, you know, what, what you're going to get dealt. So, um, so yeah, it's, it is, it is a hard road to navigate. Um, my older sister actually has twin boys and we talk so much, um, just about how to encourage each of them to be their own person and to not think you have to be like the other one. And I think I always thought that I needed to be like Brenda. She was just, she would do everything first. She, um, 
was just good at everything. So mm-hmm. I wanted to be her instead of me going, you know what? I'm going to go find my own thing. Mm-hmm. And if I would have done that, I think I probably wouldn't have struggled as much if I wouldn't have played the same sports as her, if I wouldn't have done everything that she did, then maybe, maybe it would have been easier on me, you know? But. Now you said, um, is it Brenda who has uh, twins or do you have another no, sister? My, oh, okay. sister? My old sister, Michelle has twins. When yeah, you twin learned boys. about that, you have to admit, you probably went crazy, right? <laughs> oh, I was so excited. And so here's the thing. I always wanted they're, one, to- they're kind of, you know, they're, they're of you in a way, you know, it's like being a lefty, you know, it's like, <laughs> Your I'm a lefty. Oh twins. yeah. Oh, you're a lefty. I am a lefty. I'm yeah. a lefty, and my son's a lefty. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So when Michelle, um, Michelle was pregnant with twins, we were so excited. Now, I always wanted twins just because I thought that was fun, and because you just get so much attention. <laughs> um, you know, whatever. Of course. Um, but Michelle, you know, she totally lived in the shadow of Bren and I. I mean, she was a year and a half older than us, but she just. I mean, if anyone felt like she didn't measure up, it was definitely Michelle. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting that she's the one that got to have twins. Like she gets to actually live this with her kids. And she like was kind of always put on the back burner with Brenda and I. And now she's the one, like, we're like, you are the one who deserves to have twins. Like you get to have so much fun with them because you like live through it with us. So if anyone should have twins, it's, it was her. So we are just ecstatic for her because so, so, so fun. That's awesome. Yeah, I don't have any yeah. twins in my current family, but I would imagine it's very fun um, at times. <laughs> Except gift-giving it's season. You have to buy yeah. two of everything. Yeah. Um, so we can expect a Prairie devotional to be um, next summer, right? Yes, so was- August. Um, I'm going to put a link to it in the show notes. I believe you can pre-order it. I I think I'm going to pre-order it. And, um, also if people want to follow your blog and find out more about Mm -hmm. you, they can go to uh, wendyluli.com. I'll put a link to that in the show notes as well. But Wendy, I want to thank you so much for coming on here and speaking with me and taking the time to do this. Well, it was just a pleasure, Mark. I enjoyed myself thoroughly. Yeah, me too. I, I thought it was like a lot of fun. And um, I, I learned a lot about you. I learned a lot about the show. Um, oh, one last question. Yeah. When did you break it to your husband that you are you were baby Grace, our baby Grace? <laughs> <laughs> and did he believe yeah. you? Like, was it kind of like one of these things where it's like, no, you're not. <laughs> Let me go to Google, <laughs> you know? So the, the funny thing is my husband never watched Little House. <laughs> Ever. Like his family was like a Waltons family. And we never watched the Waltons because that would be totally sacrilegious to watch the Waltons be a little house. So <laughs> um, he never watched Little House. And um in my dorm room, we started dating when I was in college. And in my dorm room where my desk was, I had a picture of my sister and I on Michael Lynn's lap. And somehow it started to get around that I was on Little House. And um he kind of thought, oh, that's cool, whatever. Like, I don't even know what that is. <laughs> that's I know. the best. <laughs> and he didn't watch it until we were engaged, wow. actually. So we got engaged, and he was um, he was a year older than me. So he had already graduated, and I was in my last year of college. And so he had, like, an apartment near school, and um, he would watch – he'd watch it every single day on his lunch break. Really? <laughs> Did he? Is he a big fan now? Well, he has to be. He has no choice. I know, but you know, it's kind of funny. It's like, all right, I better learn about this girl before I, you know, walk down the aisle. <laughs> learn about your yeah. early, early life. Yeah, he is very, very supportive. And um, the funny thing is, is somebody was asking me the other day, like, how does your husband like the book? And I said, well, he hasn't read it. He hasn't read a single page. Oh. He wants to be completely surprised. And he wants to read it for the first time when it's in print. So I can respect that though. There's something yeah. that must be like really wonderful about that. And you must be excited to be able to put a book on your bookshelf, you know, that you wrote. I, yeah. yeah. I mean, I can't even believe it when I, when I like look it up on Amazon and I'm like, my name is on a book. Are you freaking <laughs> crazy? Like seriously? Like I can't even. And it really I, is. It's a beautiful, um, the cover is really beautiful. I, I can't wait to see it. And, yeah. um, yeah, I'm, I'm very excited to read it. I've read, um, 
Well, I haven't read everyone's book from the show. I just, I don't know. I just, I read a lot and I, I have a very long queue of books that I have to read through. But right. um, some some are kind of saucy and some are, you know, more <laughs> yes, they're, plain they're they're so-, <laughs> so it's like, who knew all this is, stuff is going on? PG. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I would think so. Okay, mine is very, very PG, but, um, and mine is really easy to read because it's just like, a one to two pages like literally it's like 500 words or less so you could read just one little thing that would take three minutes so it's a very easy read and you wouldn't have to like read them all they all stand alone so it's very very user-friendly like something that you could put on your coffee table and somebody could open it up and read it and go oh my gosh look at this story this is so fun and then close it and like not read it for two months and it doesn't matter you know what i mean well, I know a number of people who are fans of the show who I, I think would make a good gift for them as well. So um, it's definitely, I'm probably order a couple just, you know, for that reason alone. But thank you again, Wendy. I, I really appreciate your time. If there's ever time you want to come back and speak again, or, um, you know, even when your book, co- you know, comes out, I, I'd love to speak with you uh, more about all of this. Yes, that'd be great. Across the plains, to meet his family, I was always to